Hello, and welcome to part one of Hitachi Cable America's Introduction to Fiber Optics. This training presentation is directed at educating Hitachi customers by providing information that develops a working knowledge of fiber optic product technology so that people in the sales channel feel comfortable to include a fiber optic product solution along with Hitachi's copper category cable products. The presentation is comprised of four parts. The four parts are optical fiber components and types, optical fiber standards, fiber cables and applications, and how to field a fiber cable inquiry. The next five slides will familiarize you with fiber component construction and the two types of commercially available fibers. The development of optical fiber as we know it today began in the 1970s with commercial introduction in the late 70s into the 80s primarily focused on military and telecom applications. Optical fiber proved to be an excellent transmission medium for use with laser and LED light sources, providing a high-speed, long-distance solution well suited for the communications industry. Today, optical fiber can be defined as a very thin, ultra-pure, flexible glass strand that can officially transmit large quantities of information in the form of light pulses. The typical optical glass fiber has an outer diameter of 125 micron, 125 thousandths of a millimeter, about the same diameter as that of a human hair. An optical fiber is comprised of three components, core, cladding, and acrylate coating. The first component is the core, the center region of the optical fiber which light is transmitted. Standard industry core sizes are 8 to 10 micron, 62.5 micron, and 50 micron. The second component is cladding, the material surrounding the central core. Its primary function is to keep the light transmitting through the fiber's central region through internal reflection. The core and the cladding materials are manufactured together in the same glass drawing process and together comprise what is called an optical waveguide. Standard industry cladding has an outer diameter of 125 micron. The third component is an acrylate plastic coating, the primary protective layer covering the optical fiber and applied during the fiber drawing process. The coating enables normal shipping and handling in the later manufacturing buffering process by cable manufacturers. Standard industry coating has an outer diameter of 250 micron. Note, when connectors are applied or fibers are fused together in a splice, the acrylate coating is removed. Multimode fiber is an optical fiber in which light travels in multiple modes or paths, thus its name. Multimode is used in shorter distance applications with a maximum of about 550 meters. Popular core sizes are 62.5 and 50 micron with a 125 micron cladding. The 62.5 micron core is more for legacy systems, while the 50 micron is the standard today. Single mode optical fibers have a small core size restricting the light signal to travel through the core taking a single path or mode. Single mode fiber is used on longer distance applications such as telecom services and high data rate networks. Core size is between 8 and 10 microns. We will now discuss optical transmission wavelengths. The communications industry has standardized a range of wavelengths that efficiently transmit through an optical fiber. Common optical transmission wavelengths are referred to as windows. These windows exist in the infrared spectrum just outside of the visible color range of 400 nanometer to 700 nanometer and are invisible to the eye. Here, you see the three most common wavelengths associated with fiber optic transmission and where these windows sit in the light spectrum. Transmission windows, shown in gray, represent the wavelengths which are efficiently transmitted through an optical glass fiber. This slide shows the windows of 850 nanometers, 1310 nanometers, and 1550 nanometers in more detail in the expected attenuation loss. The red arrows and dotted lines identify the points where light sources are optimized to function and efficiently transmit through an optical fiber. All optical fiber and cable specifications will reference one or two of these wavelengths in the product literature. The most common wavelength used in campus networks and data centers is 850 nanometers, a shorter wavelength. Long-haul telecommunication and utility service applications typically use the 1,310 nanometer and the 1,550 nanometer, a longer wavelength. The next five slides will familiarize you with the common fiber optic standard measurement and performance terminology. Both multimode and single-mode optical fibers are characterized by the term attenuation or power loss. 
Attenuation is a reduction of optical power, signal strength, between two points measured in decibels. Fiber attenuation is normally measured per unit length in decibels per kilometer. The measured decrease in signal strength along a fiber optic waveguide is primarily caused by absorption and scattering of the light wave. Absorption is caused by imperfections or contaminants in the glass, such as a water molecule. A light mode is absorbed, lowering the overall strength of signal. Scattering is caused by irregularities in the glass structure, such as a microscopic density fluctuation in the glass. A light mode is scattered, reducing the power of the continuing signal. Bandwidth is the information carrying capacity of a multimode optical fiber at a distance of 1 km measured in megahertz per kilometer, or MHZ-KM. Bandwidth is a function of the receiver to distinguish a 1 versus a 0 at the highest frequency which is necessary to build a data packet of information. It is the bandwidth frequency of the signal which allows the conversion of data protocols such as Ethernet or fiber channel into gigabits per second. In multimode, bandwidth performance is limited by the dispersion, a broadening of the transmitted light pulse. Single mode fiber has virtually unlimited bandwidth. In multimode fibers, the performance limitation affecting bandwidth is the dispersion of the transmitted light. Dispersion is the spreading or broadening of light pulses as the light modes travel through the fiber. There are two primary types of dispersion, chromatic and modal. Chromatic dispersion, depicted in the top graphic, is the spreading of light pulses caused by a light source, like a vexel, transmitting over a small range of different spectral wavelengths which travel at different speeds. For example, a light source may be optimized at 850 nanometers, but has a spectral width range of 840 nanometers to 860 nanometers. Although these signal originated at a specific moment in time, the different wavelengths of 840, 850, and 860, all carrying the same digital 1 signal, will arrive at the receiver at slightly different times, which broadens the pulse. Too many chromatic dispersions can result in transmission failures. Modal dispersion, depicted in the bottom graphic, is the spreading of light pulses along the length of a fiber caused by the different optical paths taken in a multimode fiber. For example, although the signal originated at a certain time, a light mode taking the shorter path through the center of the fiber will arrive sooner than the light mode taking the longer path bouncing back and forth within the core and the cladding. Both modes carry the same one signal, but arrive at different times, which broadens the pulse signal. Too much modal dispersion can result in transmission failures. Both multimode and single-mode optical fibers can have performance affected by mechanical stresses. Microbending is a loss of light signal due to a small mechanical lateral stress distortions or imperfections in the fiber not visible to the naked eye. Examples are fiber imperfections caused by exceeding the fiber's mechanical proof test a cable's tinsel load, fiber stress caused by buffer shrinkback, or fiber stress caused by contraction when subjected to low temperature extremes. Macrobending is the loss of light due to the severe or repeated large-scale bending caused by external forces typically caused during installation. Severe bending causes the imperfect guiding of light which will exceed the critical angle of internal reflection allowing light to escape from the core into the cladding. Macrobending is typically caused by exceeding the bend radius of a cable and can be reversed once the bend is corrected. The next two slides will familiarize you with the most common type of multimode fiber, called graded index, and the more recent introduction of bend and sensitive fibers. Graded index fibers were designed to reduce the effect of bandwidth limitations in a multimode fiber caused by modal dispersion. A graded index multimode fiber is comprised of glass applied and graded layers in the core area where each layer has a different index of refraction which affects the speed of light modes traveling through the fiber. The high order modes taking the longer path travel faster as they approach the cladding boundary. The low order modes taking the shorter path in the central core region travel slower. The net effect is both high order modes and low order modes arrive at the receiver closer to the same time with reduced mode dispersion, increasing the bandwidth and information carrying capacity of the fiber. Bend and sensitive fiber was created to reduce or eliminate the effects of macro bending, a common problem in applications that have a high concentration of fiber terminations, such as those found in campus networking and data centers. Bend and sensitive fiber includes a layer of low refractive index material, commonly called an optical trench, that is placed in the cladding. 
reflecting high order weakly guided light modes that enter the cladding due to a macro bend, which would normally create a signal loss, but instead the trench returns the signal back into the fiber core area. This slide lists the common terms that were covered in the previous slides and referenced in optical fiber specifications. Thank you for participating in Hitachi Cable America's Introduction to Fiber Optics Part 1.